there were this many people marching in places that you might expect, like Berlin or like Paris or Boston or New York, but there were this many people marching in Bujumbura and Burundi and in Kigali and Rwanda and in New Delhi and in the Maldives and in Bangladesh and in place after place after place. And here's the thing. Here's the thing. An awful lot of those places, the people who live in them, have done almost nothing to cause the trouble that the world is in at the moment. The temperature's not rising because of them. And it is a testimony to their goodness of heart and generosity of spirit that they're willing to be engaged with all of us in a kind of great global solidarity, you know? And it puts the burden even more on those of us in this part of the world to figure out how we're going to manage to change things in a big way. Now, changing things means the kind of coalition building that's gone on for this, you know? The, uh, the big environmental groups, but also all the faith groups and local labor groups and uh, on and on and on that have come together to make this work. It's been wonderful. And it means, it means using things like this as a springboard for just the kind of work that Mike Brune was describing locally, okay? And it also means, I think, that we're going to have to get even a little stronger than we have been. We're going to have to be willing to put things on the line. There are, I know, a dozen or two people in this crowd today who got arrested last month in Washington trying to, trying to block this pipeline. And that is the next test. And we need to figure out how to send a message to the president that we took him seriously when he said, let's be the generation that finally frees America from the tyranny of oil. That, that we took him seriously. We took him seriously on the night of his nomination when he said, when I'm president, the rise of the oceans will begin to slow and the planet will begin to heal. You should not say stuff like this if you don't mean it, because people believe you. And, and so, uh, on November 6th, it's a long way from here, I know, but on November 6th, we're going back to the White House, and we're going to surround it. We're going to surround it with human beings, and depending on the kind of mood you're in, it's either a big happy O oh, to encourage the president to do the right thing, or a kind of symbolic house arrest, you know? Um, um, those are the options. And, and we need, since he has the power himself to stop this pipeline, for him to do it. We need all of our leaders who have power and responsibility, like the people we've been hearing today, to step up and do the right thing. I'm so glad that you guys have stepped up. Now, I gotta tell you, you gotta stick around uh, a little while longer, because after the talking, we're gonna try and take one of these beautiful pictures that I've been seeing come in from all over the world today, and we need you in it so people other places can see that we're in this game too, that we're committed. One of the things, one of the things that's most powerful about looking at all those pictures and about, in my case, getting to travel all over the world the last few years, one of the things that's most powerful is, one of the things that's most powerful is to understand full on that this thing that people sometimes say, that environmentalism is something that rich white people do who don't have to worry about other things, and that if you had to worry about where your food was coming from, you wouldn't be an environmentalist, that that turns out to be a complete lie, that most of the people today who are rallying all over the world are poor and black and brown and Asian and young because that's what most of the world is made up of. And they join us, they join us in that solidarity for this planet. I don't know. 
how all of this is going to come out. Okay, I do not know how it all is going to come out. There are days, there are days when I get worried. I mean, the name of the first book I wrote about all this 22 years ago was The End of Nature. So you can tell I'm not a kind of Pollyanna, you know. Um, but there are other days, there are other days when I am certain that we are going to do what needs doing. That human beings will figure out how to beat back the power of money because it's only the power of money that's holding us back now. There are days when I am certain that that is going to happen. And by God, today is one of those days. All over this earth. All, all over this earth. This earth that has been stuck in neutral too long. That has had the brakes put on by Exxon and all the others. This planet, we've given it a good, hard shove today. It's in motion, and we've got to keep it in motion, and that is the work for those of us who are morally awake and alive at this moment in history. It is our job and no other. Thank you all so, so, so much.